welcome to the Love and Guts podcast. Today I'm flying solo. I'll be delving into a topic that is near and dear to my heart, bowel movements. In particular, what your poo is trying to tell you. So what it's trying to communicate to you. I've titled this episode, The Toilet Bowl Confessions, and I've also written an article on this too with fantastic poo character illustrations. So I encourage you to check that out and I'll pop the article on the show notes. If you have yet to listen to my previous short solo podcast on the topic of constipation and bowel behavior, simply jump onto my podcast channel and search for the constipation series. Or if SIBO is of interest, I have been interviewed specifically on this topic also, and you can find interviews on SIBO in my selection of interviews too. So I'm aware that many of you might be quite new to me here. So here's a little bit of background. My name is obviously Linda Griprich, and I'm a self-professed poo whisperer, naturopath and nutritionist. My journey with poo and gut health started in my early 20s, and as is a common trait of 20-somethings, I strive to achieve an image of what healthy looked like. Physically, I looked happy, healthy, and displayed all the right signs of someone who looked after themselves, but something wasn't quite right. I began to notice that At times, it would be hard for me to completely empty my bowels, a frustrating symptom for someone so busy and energetic. Studying amongst other practitioners, it had become clear that my passion was gut health, but more specifically, constipation. Faced with an overall feeling of heaviness, lethargy, and a little bit of embarrassment, I realized I wanted to help others let go of the shame that constipation brings. When I began to delve deeper, I soon discovered that constipation was almost an epidemic. Many were suffering, mostly in silence. Unfortunately, the repercussions of leaving constipation unattended aren't limited to the short term. Quick fixes such as laxatives can be detrimental to one's health and mask what may be a bigger problem at hand. The long-term consequences of avoiding seeking medical help for constipation can be extremely harmful and scary words like chronic disease could come into play down the track. So after a conversation with my husband, I announced I wanted to work with constipated people. You can imagine his surprise. And that is how I came to develop Better Me Tea. A tea I designed to promote improved gut health and digestion, assisting those who struggle with constipation and sluggish bowel movements to go to the bathroom with ease. As well as being the poo whisperer, I'm a qualified naturopath, nutritionist, yoga teacher and wellness practitioner. My qualifications and personal experience with constipation have helped me help clients struggling with the battle of misbehaving poos find relief and move on with their lives sans constipation. So as always, the information in these podcasts are not intended to diagnose or treat a medical condition. So please ask your health practitioner before beginning any new treatment. And this episode is sponsored by that amazing tea that I told you I created that helps support those who struggle with constipation and sluggish bowel movements to go to the bathroom with ease. So let's get into the toilet bowl confessions. Toilet Bowl Confessions Our poop frequency and appearance gives us insight into how well our gastrointestinal tract is functioning and can even indicate if there is a serious disease process taking place. The Bristol stool form scale is a seven point scale which has been used in clinical practice to measure stool appearance and bowel transit time, the time it takes for food to move from mouth to anus. There is even a modified five point scale Bristol stool chart for children. Most of us are detached from our human manufacturing, investigating only when we feel off, gassy, constipated, bloated, or when there's an uncontrollable urgency to pass poo. I would like to ask you to do the unthinkable. Get up close and personal with your poo. To infuse some fun into this foreign concept, I, along with the fabulous illustrator, Joel Tarling, have created poo characters to help your poo communicate with you better. Bridging the gap between you and your bowel behavior. 
Consider me the poo whisperer who gently taps you on the shoulder when you're not paying attention. You see, your poo is trying to tell you what's happening under the human epithelial bonnet. If you listen, it may just save you years of poor health and loads of money spent trying to band-aid treat symptoms. Would you ignore taking action if your baby didn't poo for a week or if their movements were explosive and strangely colored? I didn't think so. Then quit ignoring the messages your poo is trying to deliver. So let's talk about some poo characteristics that I'd love for you to keep an eye on. Colors important, as is texture. Is it formed or is it loose? Look at the shape of it, the size, the frequency. How often do you go during the week? Do you notice any noticeable bits in it like undigested foods, mucus, blood, pus, fat globules? Does it sink or does it float? What's the smell like? Is it mild or is it foul? Do you often strain or is it easy to pass? Is your poo accompanied by pain? And are there any changes from your normal frequency and appearance? We are all so wonderfully unique, which means that there are many variables to the, the appearance of our poo. There are, however, some poopy characters that warrant your attention. Some of these I'm going to discuss right now. So the first fella who is part of the Pooh talent quest is the rock star. He often looks like pebbles or pellets, rocks, nuts, or is often referred to as rabbit poo. He's often hard to pass and feels incomplete and unsatisfying. The color may be medium to dark brown, and he might be an indication of dehydration dysbiosis, which is a gut bacteria imbalance, stress, IBS, poor diet that lacks sufficient fiber and water. Pellet poo is generally constipation. Now we move on to the overweight opera singer. He's often lumpy, large, hard and thick. He's often difficult to pass, feels like concrete and is often accompanied by straining and pain. These stools may contain blood due to tearing of hemorrhoids or anal tears, otherwise known as fissures. These bowel mo motions are often infrequent and the color may be medium to dark brown. And he could be an indication of constipation, dehydration, a sedentary lifestyle, consuming too much protein, which stresses the kidneys and can result in chronic dehydration. Hard, dry stools are difficult to pass. Poor diet that lacks sufficient fiber and water can also be a driver. Now, the next dude that we move on to is the pop singer, otherwise known as the exhibitionist. She likes to expose what she's eaten. She contains visible undigested food remnants and her color may vary. She could be a sign of maldigestion, which is incomplete or impaired digestion, or malabsorption, which is poor absorption of nutrients from food. Could also be a sign of dysbiosis, either putrefactive or fermentative, low stomach acid, otherwise known as hypochlorhydria, or pancreatic insufficiency. Now we move on to the man, or should I say, the man, smooth crooner. He's the one that we're all wanting to achieve every day. He may be sausage shaped or S shaped, smooth and long. He's well formed and slides out easily. He pinches off at the end without leaving any debris on the bum. His smell is mild and not repulsive. He feels like a complete emptying of the bowels. He sinks slowly. He's painless and without blood. He likes to say hello to you once or twice daily. His color may be medium brown like milk chocolate. You may even experience pooforia, a feeling of euphoria after having a bowel movement. It's a real thing, according to gastroenterologist Dr. Anish Sheath. And look, he's a sign of a healthy pooing experience. Now we move on to the tortured lean muso. He's often narrow looking, skinny, pencil like, and he may be accompanied by straining and he often feels incomplete. 
Infrequent narrow stools is not of huge concern. However, if experienced often, consult your healthcare practitioner as it may be a sign of bowel obstruction, fecal impaction, or a tumor, especially if accompanied with bleeding or severe pain. And now we move on to the toxic musician. Now he can smell pretty foul and he may appear black, tarry, which is sticky and shiny, bright red, maroon or red. Black stools may indicate bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract, such as ulcers. Red or maroon blood may be indicative of diverticular, inflammatory conditions of the colon and rectum, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, hemorrhoids and anal fissures, even cancer. Black or red stools can also be due to medications and supplements such as iron or foods such as black licorice, squid ink, beets or blueberries. If your stools are black and or tarry, seek an evaluation from your healthcare practitioner. And now we move on to the roadie, otherwise known as the floater. He often floats to the top of the water. Floating stools indicate gas production by bacteria in the colon and is often mistaken for steatorrhea. steatorrhea. Let's try to say that a few times, which is fatty stools. He's generally light in color, pale, gray, green, or yellow. And this could be an indication of malabsorption or excess gas in stool due to certain foods such as sugar, lactose, starch, fiber, lactose intolerance, gastrointestinal infections, celiac disease, or cystic fibrosis. And how can we forget the greasy, slimy singer? He often contains fat globules, mucus, or pus. He might be bulky, mushy, greasy, or oily and difficult to flush. He may have a foul stench and he usually floats. An oily anal leakage or fecal incontinence may also be present. And his color may be pale, light yellow, clay colored, or gray. Now, this could be an indication of malabsorption and maldigestion, impaired digestion of fats, poor bile production, an infection or inflammation in the bowel, IBS, inflammatory bowel conditions such as Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, leaky gut, chronic pancreatitis. SIBO, cirrhosis, short bowel syndrome, or colon cancer, especially when associated with blood and pain. Now we do love mucus because mucus is produced in the intestines to protect and coat the gut lining. So it does have an important purpose. Now the other fellow that we move on to is the love song singer. This dude is loose, watery, liquid, diarrhea even, and may contain food particles, blood, pus, or mucus, and may be accompanied by fever, chills, and abdominal pain, and might like to say hello to you more than three watery bowel movements a day. The color may vary. This could be an indication of dehydration, a virus, bacterial, or parasitic infection, food poisoning, nerves, IBS, gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, carbohydrate malabsorption such as lactose intolerance, inflammatory bowel conditions such as Crohn's, ulcerative colitis or leaky gut. Diarrhea can also be a sign of a type of constipation called bowel overflow, where loose stool seeps out around a hard impacted stool, your body's desperate attempt to get rid of waste. Medications and supplements such as magnesium, antacids, and laxatives can cause diarrhea. Diarrhea dehydrates and upsets our electrolyte balance, which weakens the body and should not be left unattended for more than three days. So I want to chat about the color and the scent a little more. So let's talk about brown. Medium brown is ideal. Variations from brown may indicate incomplete or impaired digestion. Now let's look at green. Green poo often means that food is passing through your digestive tract quickly, which can be a sign that something is not agreeing with your body and it is being removed ASAP. You may be moving toward diarrhea. Certain foods and supplements such as leafy vegetables, spirulina and chlorophyll can cause poo to be green too. 
gray, yellow, or white. These colors may indicate the presence of mucus and or a problem with the liver, bile production, gallbladder, or pancreas. Certain medications such as antacids and antibiotics may produce white or yellow stools. Yellow stools may also indicate an infection from pathogens such as Giardia or be indicative of Gilbert syndrome. What about black or tarry, bright red or red? Congealed blood is black. Fresh blood is red. Refer back to the toxic musician for more on this. Now let's look at smell. It is so normal for poo to smell. However, if the odor is extremely foul, it should not be ignored. Foul smelling stool can be a sign of conditions such as malabsorption, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, carbohydrate intolerance, food allergies, chronic pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, short bowel syndrome, and infections, either bacterial, viral, or parasitic, such as C. diff, otherwise known as Clostridium difficile. <laughs> Please note that this is a general guide only. The big take home is that if you experience a change in bowel frequency and appearance, don't ignore it or suffer in silence. Seek professional advice as your poo may be trying to tell you something. And people like myself love working with stool, believe it or not. Thank you for making it to the very end of this podcast episode. One more thing before you go. If you struggle with digestive health that leaves you feeling antisocial, frustrated and flat, you've self-prescribed to the nines with little or no results, please do get in contact. I have seen many people improve the quality of their life simply by seeking the support of a qualified health practitioner such as myself. The good news is my consultations are run online, which means it does not matter where you are located, I can work with you. To schedule in a naturopathic and nutrition consultation with me, simply head to my website, lindagriprich.com, and go to the book a consultation page. Or send an email to info at lindagriprich.com.